Hi guys and welcome to this episode on hyperparameter optimization. The topics for this episode are what are hyperparameters, followed by some hyperparameter optimization methods uh, such as manual search, random search, grid search, and Bayesian optimization. And the last topic here is advantages and disadvantages of optimization methods. So what are hyperparameters? First, what are normal parameters? Let's say, for example, we constructed a model that had the following structure, y equals d to 1 plus d to 1x squared. And let's say we train this model on a set of data using gradient descent. And we learned that theta 0 is 1.5 and theta 1 is 2. So these are just normal model parameters. Um, they're, they're parameters that are learned from the data. They aren't really parameters that we can change or set ourselves. Hyperparameters, on the other hand, they're really a special type of parameter, and they are the parameters used to control the learning process and structure of the model. So for example, with gradient descent, we can set the learning rate alpha. Um, for gradient boosted trees, we can set the number of trees. So these are all examples of hyperparameters. So our first hyperparameter optimization method here is manual search. And this relies on previous intuition of machine learning algorithms uh, to set hyperparameters. So for example, if we were using gradient boosted trees um, and we realized we had a large complex data set, uh, we would then use a large number of trees and a small learning rate. For smaller, more simple data sets, we would use a smaller number of trees and less depth. So manual search really is just using our intuition of machine learning algorithms and the complexity of the data set to set hyperparameters ourselves. Next is random search. And here we provide a set of hyperparameters. Uh, so in this example here, we're looking at learning rates, number of trees, and maximum tree depth. And random search essentially just samples from this space and tries to find what hyperparameters uh, results in the best model performance. So for example here, um, we have five iterations. Uh, and in this first iteration here, for example, it sampled um, 0 0.01 for the learning rate, so the first uh, learning rate that we gave here, uh, the number of trees of 100 and a maximum tree depth of 4, and then it calculated the resulting accuracy um, with these hyperparameters to be 0 0.72. Um, so we can apply many iterations, and here we just applied 5, and then what we do is we just select <coughs> what hyperparameters resulted in the best model um, performance, and we just use those hyperparameters uh, for our model, which in this case is from the last iteration here, um, with a learning rate of 0 0.25, uh, 1,000 trees, and a maximum depth of 6. So the next example here is grid search. Um, and this is quite similar to random search, but instead, but instead we go through every um, possible combination of hyperparameters. So here we're just looking at two hyperparameters, and that's the uh, maximum tree depth and the number of trees. And this grid here just represents what are all the possible combinations uh, of these two hyperparameters. So let's say, for example, after applying grid search, we find that the best model performance comes from uh, 100 trees and a maximum tree depth of 10. We can then narrow the grid search down to become more granular. And we can set now here the number of trees to look around um, 100 and the maximum tree depth here to also be around 10. So the next hyperparameter optimization method here is um, Bayesian optimization. And essentially with Bayesian optimization, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to estimate a function um, that shows the relationship between our target value and the model's hyperparameters. So in this example here, um, we're just looking at the hyperparameter alpha, and in this case, our target here is accuracy. We see, and we can see here a function that shows our relationship between our hyperparameter um, and our target. So with Bayesian optimization, this function is not known, but we're trying to estimate this function. And then once we find this function, we can then look at what um, alpha value would yield the highest accuracy, which in this case here we can see is around um, 0 0.25. So for the first step of Bayesian optimization, we take uh, samples and calculate the resulting accuracy um, from these samples. So here we're taking five samples. In this case, it's uh, completely random but there are more uh, sophisticated sampling methods. 
and for each of these samples, we calculate the resulting model accuracy. We then train a Gaussian regressor to try to estimate a function from these samples. With a Gaussian regressor, we actually train many regression functions, and the mean regression function uh, is represented by the blue line here, and the uncertainty uh, is represented by the orange area. We then calculate the acquisition function, and this tells us where, where there is possible gain in searching a particular area. From this function, we can then look at which alpha value results in the most gain, and then we would then add another sample with that alpha value. So from the acquisition function, uh, we found that an alpha value um, quite close to 0 0.25 resulted in the highest accuracy, and we then calculate the resulting accuracy and add that here. We then train another Gaussian regressor to now estimate the function with this new sampled point. So now we repeat this process for a set number of iterations. So we use the acquisition function to find another sample point. We then add that sample point and then train a Gaussian regressor. So for two more iterations, we get something that looks like this. And we find that an alpha value of around 0 0.25 yields the um, highest accuracy. So that's really just a high level explanation of Bayesian optimization. So now let's look at some advantages and disadvantages of these optimization methods. So with manual search, you know, that was about using intuition to set our uh, machine learning hyperparameters. Some advantages is very quick. We're able to obtain you know, quite optimized hyperparameters. You know, if you have good experience and intuition of the machine learning algorithm. Some disadvantages, however, is that you're not really able to search a space of hyperparameters quickly and it requires you to manually rerun the model. For random search, it's quite quick. We're able to search a space of hyperparameters, but since it is random, we may miss certain combinations of hyperparameters. Next is grid search, and that's looking at every possible combination of hyperparameters uh, that we try to search through. And an advantage of this method is that it enables you to search thoroughly um, a space of hyperparameters, but since you are uh, searching every possible combination, it can be very slow um, when searching a large space of hyperparameters. And lastly, Bayesian optimization, uh, the more technical uh, optimization method. With this, the advantages are that hyperparameter selection in general improves after each iteration. We calculate the acquisition function to search in a hyperparameter space uh, that tries to improve our model's performance. And so it's not as random. It is, however, quite a technical optimization method and can be slow to implement. So that's all for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and learned something new.